In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at an all new camera from Foxeer. Now, this is called the Foxeer Toothless Micro Full Weather FPV Camera. Now, they're calling it full weather, but they don't really mean the weather as in rain and winter. It's more of like the daylight condition or the light condition of weather they're stating here. Maybe it's kind of translated from Chinese to English in a way, but that's the whole idea here. Now, they're using a half an inch CMOS sensor, which is going to be really great. However, I think we'll have some sort of latency included, which is what we're going to be testing today. So it's also 4x3 and 16x9 selectable, so you can choose whatever aspect ratio you want to go with. It also supports both NTSC and PAL, and again, you could choose whatever one you want right out of the box, which is really great. And the input voltage is 4.5 volts up to 20 volts. However, I never recommend adding battery voltage to the FPV cameras because they are so more susceptible to noise and also blowing up. So make sure you set these up on some sort of regulator, whether it's a 5, 9, 12, just a stable regulator. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start the latency testing. So the testing results for the Foxair Toothless are in, and it is, to be honest, what I've expected with the increase of latency. Now let's take a quick look at the backside before proceeding to the latency testing. Now this thing can take battery voltage as I've mentioned earlier, however I don't recommend you set that up on battery voltage unless you really have to. We also have our video input wire, our OSD wire, and our voltage sense wire. Now the last wire all the way on the right will go to the positive side of wherever your battery is going to be connected because this is basically a multimeter and which will give you the battery voltage on your on-screen display that this thing has in built. It also has a flight timer. It's not really a flight timer. It's more of an on timer. So once you plug in the battery, it starts a timer for you. So you kind of get an idea of how long you've been flying. Now, some of the things they provide you with is silicone wires, which is pretty stiff. And I really like their wires more than Runcam and also the OSD remote, which you'll need. And it does come with the connector here so you'll be able to set that up now for the latency testing on this camera it's pretty static which means it doesn't fluctuate that much now with the led turning on it was reaching roughly 22.4 milliseconds so it was anywhere between we can say 22 to 23 milliseconds with the led turning on however once we move into the led turning off that's where we see a big spike in latency however we can't really consider it latency but more of the exposure levels and the brightness levels kind of getting toned down by the wide dynamic range in order for you to get the best picture but it is kind of slow so from 22 milliseconds it jumped to roughly 34 36 milliseconds but when it actually started to register the led turning off it was roughly 24 milliseconds so you can take that wherever you want to take it however it's still under the 35 millisecond zone i would definitely would have wished it was under the 20 millisecond however Anything above 35 milliseconds is the no-go zone. And that's where you start to notice the difference in latency. It will affect your flying. And well, that's going to conclude it for this video, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Everything is linked down below. Go ahead and check those out. Those greatly support the channel. Come join my Patreon. I have a ton of giveaways. You also do support this channel and you get access to my secret shop. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, guys.